morning. It's a lovely morning and my desk is a mess. And I'm on my second cup of coffee. I'm trying to wake up my computer. And I did all kinds of little, I kept some of these frames and I took old cards. I know that one, you know, I could have trimmed things up and, but I don't know, I like it just like that. And then this one, this is a heavy frame too. I'd say it's like five pounds. And then we've got that sweet card because I had these charming, charming cards. This is a card that was made for me. If you are still watching my videos, I love this card. I kept it. And look at that. It's got the gate. She sketched our backyard with my little Cafe Bustello. <laughs> oh, people used to do such sweet, send, make cards and things. And I've kept a lot of the handmade. Like I had a wonderful subscriber make this little rooster for me. I've kept it for years. I love it. And there's a rake outside she decorated and I have it outside. It's getting a little weathered. And there is a wonderful, um, Amy had made a wonderful lotus for me that I still have. Hold on, I gotta turn. I get copyrighted because the radio. Anyway, I've kept that lotus forever. A little piece broke off and I was traumatized but I've kept that. She did this beautiful thing where she did a private video to me thanking me. And then she sent me this Lotus because she's obviously a very talented artist. So I really treasure these handmade. There was a woman who made me a little a cookbook too with all kinds of homemade recipes. Anyway, all right, so I am starting my morning. I need to, every day I've been doing some purging and some cleaning. And um, I just pace myself, obviously. Obviously the laundry has not been a part of the daily projects. So today's laundry, where I actually have to fold it and put it away. Because at this point we're just working from baskets and piles. Because it's all here. So we're going to put this stuff away and I have some wonderful, I have a wonderful movie I can put in and watch. I've got to get this organized so I can actually work at my desk because I need to do some writing and I have a lot of video to edit. And, um, I don't know. I've just been having a lot of fun with the house, just doing a little decorating, a little purging and the purging isn't really noticeable. But what it does, I kind of cleaned up and fixed up this yesterday, too. It's not real noticeable, but it's just made more space so that I can, you know, get the books off the floor, put them on a shelf, which actually I have a space for those now. So, and, you know, kind of gussing up like this piano. We're not using it right now. The kids used it for two years. I'm hoping someday someone wants to play again. But in the meantime, I made it a little more charming and it's got its little lamp. And, oh, and we're gonna do oatmeal. So today, uh oh, I need a spoon. I need a spoon. Oh, here, I love my wooden spoons. I gotta get more wooden spoons, I love them. Oh gosh, okay, hold on. I'm, gonna, I'm doing oatmeal with raisins. Okay, whoops. I had action mode and bright lights. So this is great because we can use this stuff up like raisins. I have a lot of raisins. So it's wonderful to use them up. I can also make oatmeal cookies. Oatmeal is a wonderful thing to have on bulk for cereals, cookies, muffins, oat milk. When I make smoothies, I make oat milk. I don't use it for my coffee. I'm very particular about my creamers for my coffee although I got to figure that out too because that would save a lot of money all right so I have put about five boxes out on the street three about four this size and one really big one this one came back and that's good because I was thinking I need a box today so they left one box and 
went to the health food store and loaded up on some more nectarines and peaches and grapes. All organic, pretty pricey. Our little store, our little health food store has great prices, but they don't have the best selection of produce or that much produce. But then let me show you what else I got on the way. So we were driving along. I went up this one street because I had a feeling they've been purging a lot. And I thought, I want to go up there and see if there's some free stuff. Well, they didn't have that much. But the guy across the street called me over and they were cleaning out their garage. And I got all kinds of clothes for the boys and the man. All these nice button up shirts and some just nice plain black shirts. And I got Bali some more shorts. Not really his style, but he needs them. And I got this wonderful, this will be perfect for a plant because I actually don't have enough stands for my plants. And then I got all these pillows and they're all pretty clean for the couch. Okay, we're gonna, we're running low. I'm almost out of salsa, but that's enough for two burritos maybe, or maybe it's just juice. I think it's just, oh, it's actually just juice. So no, no salsa today, but we got a little sour cream, cheese. I got Kiki's cheese sauce microwaving. I've got rice, I'm making a whole nother pot of rice. Heated up the beans. This morning we had oatmeal. One of the children requested oatmeal. I was so surprised that I just threw in a ton of raisins and we had that for breakfast. And what else do we have here? I wonder if these are ready. That one's not. That one's not. Darn. Okay, so these are going to be really boring. They're going to be bean, rice, and cheese, and sour cream burritos. Looking for this one. I love this one. Dream big. So I got to find a really cute place for that one besides the couch. And I did straighten up the desk. I am editing right now. I'm writing and editing. I got my my desk pretty much cleaned and straightened. Did I say desk or couch? I don't know. Anyway, I got it pretty cleaned up. Took some oil and dusted the top. So I'm getting that done. I'm going to start on this. And, but I need to make some food, some big plump burritos. So nobody's hungry. And today is warmer. So I'm hoping we get out to the pool. Well, hello. I just wanted to sit and chat. I was gonna chat with you this morning. I love having my coffee and making a video. It's like my new favorite thing. I can't wait sometimes to get up in the morning, either have my coffee and read in bed. Well, I usually do that. And then my second cup of coffee, I'll come and film. Somebody's time's up. They still have their computer and they party on it. But this is like day three, no TV in the living room. Nobody's missed it. Nobody said a word. Nobody even cares. It's wonderful. And it's nice and peaceful. I usually have a little movie going in here and the kids can come in here and put something on and I have my radio going in the kitchen. And it's just nice. And I like the local radio because then I feel kind of connected to the community because I listen to the two local stations. And then I know our local weather. I never listen to local news, none of that. But they don't have too much. They have NPR on one of them. And I'm like, no. So I listen to the local stations and I have friends who actually work on some of those stations. So it's fun hearing their voice and hearing what's going on in the community. And sometimes they're playing music from the fairgrounds and the fairgrounds are like right over there. Like we could walk over there. Not that club. Well, yeah, could we? Yeah, we could walk. It would take like maybe 20 minutes or less, 15 minutes. So when they have festivals going over there and they have a lot of music festivals, I can hear it over here. Like if I'm in the garden, I can kind of hear it. 
and then it's playing on the radio. So it just makes me feel like I'm in my community. And I love this community because it's small and doable. I cannot do big communities. I cannot do city communities, which I'm going to talk about. Okay, this little girl wants me to hold her. So I shall hold her. I shall hold you and cuddle you. Oh, you're so cute. So anyway, I've got a big old burrito waiting for me, but I'm not hungry right now. I'm kind of into my coffee, my ice water, which I have to put some more ice in here, and my fruit. And then I'll wait till I'm really hungry. I love food. Tastes so good when you're super hungry. Oh, somebody's yawning. Somebody needs a nap and their little eyeballs cleaned out. What is with you? We went for a little walk, but she's just very, very, very needy. Yes, she is. Well, mostly she's just wanting to find stuff to eat. It's ridiculous. It's like, my gosh, girl. Go on. Go on, girl. Anyway, I'm working on another book like this. Oh, that's it's upside down and backwards. All that changes from my front porch. I had a lot of positive reviews on this book. People love this book. I love this book. And I don't... I do not go back and read any of my books, but I've actually taken to reading a little bit of this. And I love that I did it because it's I captured my life and my kids and I don't know. Someone said something, I had one person, I don't remember if it was this book or the other book, and they made a comment about how I don't mention my husband and kids that much, but my husband and kids don't really want to be, my kids do not want to be talked about at all. They said, by law, I cannot, you know, film them or, uh, they're like their grandmother. Their grandmother, my mother was an attorney and I'm telling you, it's in the DNA or something. But you know, they have let me know. They do not want to be filmed or written about or talked about. And there's funny, charming stories that I would love to tell about them. And sometimes Bali is pretty funny himself. You know, because we always have this cultural thing going on and the conversation thing. I told him the other day, I said, I feel, and I mean this honestly, when we talk, sometimes I feel like I'm trying to figure out like Chinese riddles. It's just always like, what, huh, who? Or Abbott and Costello, who's on first or who's on second. If you've ever seen a clip, I wanted to put one of those clips on one of my videos, but you can get on YouTube and type in Abbott and Costello, Costello, um, who's on second? Is it who's on first or who's on second? See, I'm already confused. Um, and if you watch that clip, that is Bali and I every day. Just constant, like, confused. We're confused by each other. I don't know what it is. But we understand enough to navigate and have everyone's needs met and be happy. So that's all that's important, right? And sometimes it's quite funny. But I don't really... Um, I don't know, my husband, my kids don't want me to write about them. They don't want me to film them. Bali doesn't mind being filmed a little bit. And he's always suggesting. He's He loves micromanaging. He's always suggesting what I should, like show them this, tell them that. Show them how I cook this. And so I do, I am, I'm showing everything. I'm like, great idea. But other than that, if you're wondering, like, why didn't she write about her kids and her husband that much? Because they don't want me to. And I have adorable stories, especially my kids. I'm crazy in love with my kids. They are my world. But honestly, I don't really, I've never really liked to talk too much about motherhood. I never got into those mom and talk groups. I never wanted to like talk ad nauseum. I just like to talk about it. Like I go to my closest friends when I'm having some issues, 
Like I'm trying to decide something like, is, would this be good for the kids or would this be beneficial if I got rid of this or develop that or how, you know, or so-and-so's behaving like this and I'm getting a little bit stressed out. I don't know if I'm handling it well. So I do go to older parents who've already gone through it and they're people that are really kind and compassionate and open-minded and, you know, did a great job with their kids. Those are the people I look to for advice and direction and guidance because, okay, so Sam wanted to talk and I forgot what I was saying. I had a stream of consciousness, consciousness, and I forgot, darn it. And I can't, I guess I could watch the clip before, but I'm, I, I just can't do that. Anyway, I'm not gonna record for too much longer because I, well, I just took a box, another box. So we have taken six boxes out to the street. I think I already said that. Piece of furniture, two wall hangings. I'm on a roll. Does it really, is it really noticeable? No, you don't look around and go, wow, you really decluttered. No, you wouldn't even notice. But what I notice is there's a lot more space, like there's more room on shelves. So I was able to get rid of one shelving unit and put all the books on my, the shelving unit out there and there was lots of room. And then I pulled out all the frames. I, I got rid of most of them. I kept the nicer ones and I made these wonderful little, you know, collages with the cards I've received. And um, I don't know if it, but I've been doing this for years and I've gotten really deep. Like my closets are pretty clean and tidy. They are not packed with stuff. And I only have two bins now with decorations for Christmas and fall. I think that's it, just fall and Christmas. And, you know, my shelves are not that packed. I mean, it, it, we're looking good, we're doing good. And I don't wanna go through the clothes, maybe I should, but I've been finding all these, like, okay, I think this is the sixth, maybe fifth or sixth, I think we're on the sixth time in the last, since the beginning of the year that I have found clothes. I mean, not just on the street, but like people are right now in all these neighborhoods, people were doing major spring cleaning as I was. And then today, you know, like, and it's always happens like this. I just put a ton of stuff on the street and sure enough, I drive around and I just went up that street because that person, there's a house, they keep purging their closet. And I found some good stuff for myself and Mariah. But some guy was cleaning out his garage and he called me over and those pillows are like new, haven't been used. But pillows are washable too. Although they don't always turn out so great once they've been washed, you know what I mean? They're like misshapen and so anyway, that was a score today. We have lots of organic fruit. We have some free pillows. I threw all the laundry, all the clothes in the laundry. There's some great stuff for Sam, Dad, a couple things for Mariah. I don't really need anything. I have quite the wardrobe. So as a matter of fact, what I do need is I need some hangers. I need some more hangers and so this is my next project. I have cleaned my desk. I am processing the last video for all of you and I'm about two months ahead and I don't mean to be two months ahead but I just get into what I'm doing. I just I really want to show you a lot of stuff and I've been thinking about the videos like what kind of videos I watch that I really get into? Like what do I love to watch in a video? And I like a lot of variety. I like it when I really enjoy Live It Like Lauren. I enjoy her, she's charming. And I like to watch her videos and I really love her mum, her mum. So, and then when they go on vacation, that's kind of dreamy. But what I like is I wanna learn and I want to be entertained. 
I'm really high maintenance. I want to be educated and entertained, and I want to see variety. I want to go to the store with the person. I want to go for a walk with the person. I want to watch them clean. I want to hear them, their deep insights. I want to see them cook. I want to learn how to be poor but live a rich life. You know, I want all of it. I want it all. I want it now. So I'm trying to give you that in every video. If you have noticed, which I'm sure you'll, you know, because I'm two months ahead, I'm sure you'll have already been pleased, but that's what I'm trying to do with all my videos. Make them very colorful and busy and a little bit of everything for everyone. And then fun music and so, I, and I can't wait, I love this iMovie editing program and I can't wait to make videos, to put it on here, to play with it, to, you know, put music and uh, just have fun. And sometimes the music does not go with the situation and sometimes the music cuts off at the wrong time and then, but I'm just, I'm learning. Sometimes I can't get music to like, you know, I can't get it to segue from one soundtrack to another. Like it leaves this space. Anyway, I'm learning. I'm learning, learning, learning. But I was reading some comments today on the video. Um, today's, what's today's video? Vlog 16. Anyway, it was back in June. So I'm commenting late on back in June and some of you are talking about anxiety and being like suffering anxiety so bad that you couldn't leave your house or you've been hospitalized. That breaks my heart. I don't suffer anxiety like that, but I do get nervous when I have to do something new. I get really nervous and uncomfortable because I can't see the whole layout like this is what's going to happen from a to z here's the whole layout look at it i've even like sometimes when i watch a movie i've even watched the end i'll start it and then i'll just scroll to the end just to see what happens so i can relax and enjoy the journey or i'll read the end of the book just to see like does everyone make it and then i'll go and i can enjoy the journey <clears throat> but <clears throat> but I do have like sometimes I just go out in the world and I don't like highways I don't like crowded cities I don't like crowded roads I hate driving in Sacramento I hate it I used to live there and I hated it even with a Garmin and daytime it's too crazy. It's too much traffic going too fast and there's too many on ramps and off ramps and this and that. I don't like it. It was a nightmare. I hated it. Okay. And I don't like driving freeways. I'm not crazy about driving period anymore. I used to love driving and I used to travel everywhere. Can't stand it now. And sometimes when I'm out there, it doesn't feel good or right. Sometimes I, I'm out there and there's nothing that's happening and people are being fine, but I don't, I feel almost like I'm not safe. I just feel like I need to get home, like right now. And then I don't feel safe until I'm in our neighborhood and I turn on our street and then I feel like, oh, okay, I'm going to be okay. And I personally think that when you're empathic, you're an empath. You feel energies really strongly. We all can do it if we tune in, but some of us feel it really strongly. And when there's a lot of violence and chaos going on in the world, as there is right now, we feel it. It doesn't matter if it's across the seas in other countries. We feel that fear and pain and violence and anger. We, some, we sense it a little bit. And everybody's tuned in to the TV and the news, everybody around us, they're all watching, and maybe you are too, everybody's watching the news, and everybody's on social media, and talking about it, and thinking about it, and you pick up their thoughts, and their feelings, and their fears of the world. 
So it just doesn't feel good. So I run back home and then I feel okay. And I think that that's okay. I think it's okay for us to create a world where we feel safe and happy and that it is imperative that if you suffer anxiety, you do not watch the news, period. There is nothing you can do. You can sign petitions, you can vote, you can send donations to proper organizations. Be very careful because there's a lot of organizations that um, are not good organizations, but we know that there are quite a few that are good and we know what they are. You can do things like that, okay? Or you can volunteer your time, walking dogs at the shelter, working at the food bank or whatever. But you have to find ways that you can contribute to the world that you can handle. Like for some of us, donating money is about all we can do. Or, you know, like the kids and I were volunteering at the food bank last summer. We haven't really, I don't know if I'm gonna do it this year. I don't even know if I'm gonna continue. I am donating more food. I have all these Mylar bags, little Mylar bags from the prepper who gave me all that food and I cannot go through all of them. I don't even know the beans. I mixed the good beans with his beans. I shouldn't have done that because I really had to cook my beans for a long time the other day, like a long, long, long time. So even though he's got the beans and rice stored in Mylar bags, I don't know. I think we just need to spread, give, donate them so everyone can just eat them up before they go to waste. So that's tomorrow's project. I'm gonna clear all of that out. And um, yeah, but that's, you know, sometimes I donate a lot of stuff or I volunteer or I, I have money donations, what I can afford. <clears throat> And, but I don't. I refuse to watch the news. I will never watch the news. I don't care what anyone says. I know my family thought I was really kind of acting like a dumb blonde, you know, like they were so into news and politics. My whole family, my mother, her crowd, they were all like really addicted and sucked into news and politics. And it was 24 seven. And I personally don't have a stomach for it anymore at all. And I have realized I don't need to watch it just because everyone else is. I don't need to watch it to feel like a grown up. I don't need to watch it to know what's going on. I don't need to know what's going on. All I can do, I do vote. I do sign petitions. I do donate money. I sometimes volunteer. That is all I'm gonna do. That's all is one little human out of 8 billion humans. I think that's a lot. And there's nothing like with the wars and everything, there's nothing, yes, I once again vote petitions, but other than that, I can't do anything. Can't go over there and put a stop to it. Anyway, you know, I'm not a president or a governor or a representative or a queen or even a princess, even though I act like one sometimes. So there you have it. Anyway. But I think especially if someone suffers from anxiety, no, do not have social media. Do not go on the news. Make your home into a sanctuary. Make your yard into a lush oasis. Be so careful about who you allow around you, who you talk to on the phone, what you watch, what you read, what you listen to. Read peaceful little books. Like if you like romance books, read romance books. Listen to positive, lovely music. I've been addicted to these waltzes. I've been listening to all these compilations of waltzes. Ballroom dancing, love it. When I lived in San Francisco, I took two semesters of ballroom dancing. So fun. We did the foxtrot and the polka and the waltzes and oh my goodness, it was so fun. So, you know, do stuff like that. Like I go out and water my trees and I listen to classical music or opera. <clears throat> and, but especially really assess who is surrounding you. We are 
made up of the five people we surround ourselves with. Remember that. We are made up of the five people we surround ourselves with. Okay, that's super important. Right now, I'm surrounded by Bali, my two children, my friend in Oregon, and then I have uh, my friend in Texas. And those are the, f I have more friends than that, but those are like my five staple people. And they're super positive, super, you know, spiritually aware and growing. Well, I mean, not so much the kids. The kids are just pure fun and love. And Bali, Bali can be kind of grumpy and serious, but he's solid. He's solid and he's already been banned from the news, telling me the news. He loves the news. I don't, he knows I'm, I'm not, he's got to call someone else and talk to someone else about it. Um, and then I do have other, you know, friends and I'm starting to make friends. Well, I've been making friends here for years. Cause remember I used to come up here with the kids for forest school and stuff for years. So I have a lot of acquaintances and then, you know, I've, I've, got one person who's becoming kind of a good friend and then I know a lot of people around here but I like it like that like I love being like oh hello you know how are you doing and you know or seeing them they drive down the street and honk and I'm like oh hello oh you know but don't really have the time or energy to like really have friendships here and focus on them and put my attention it's a lot of work it's like being like partially married every friend you have is like having a marriage a side marriage and another side marriage because they require time and attention and love and nurturing when you have a family like that all that love and nurturing goes to my kids and my partner and molly my family and my home and my garden and all the things alive in my yard and then i have two friends that i have energy for them and then there's barely anything left there's like a side dish over here so and I used to be really social and had tons of friends and talking on the phone all the time and so don't want that anymore like there would be no time to read or write or you know edit or oh it's done already oh look at that look you got another video all right so i'm done here i'm gonna eat my burrito and see if it's getting warm enough to swim it's kind of making me crazy it's been like the 70s low 80s with overcast and wind and so I haven't been in the pool in days. And it's a bummer because it's like an extra workout for me. And then the kids and I have so much fun. So it's like this big thing we do the minute the pool warms up. But we're kind of suffering right now. Good morning. Well, I have been doing some deep cleaning. Deep cleaning in the house. Oh, there, I had to change that. Anyway, I finally got around. I just cleaned the back of the house. The bathroom and this room. And I swept and mopped and scoured everything. But I also did some deep cleaning where I took... I did not film it because I was too deep into the work. And I had gloves and all kinds of stuff going on. But I have this wonderful bucket down here and it has all kinds of tools and there are a couple rags but I'm washing them now and I put lots of soap just dish soap and hot water and I and I use lots of soapy water and I just scrub this whole thing down because I work from here so much making sourdough and pizza dough and tortillas and other kinds of bread so it gets really nasty I do all my cooking over here and it gets really nasty in here, so I gotta pull it out and, you know, kind of take it apart a little bit and scrub it. And look at it, it looks beautiful. I should have shown it before. It was so crusty and so gross. And my stove was kind of crusty and gross too. And I took, 
I haven't done the whole stove, but I took the knobs off and I used a butter knife and a rag. Next time I'll show this stuff, but I was really getting into it because ah, the house is at that point where it needs some love and attention. And that guy never called me who was gonna start, you know, like every few months he was gonna come and deep clean. And it's probably the universe saving me from myself because we don't need to spend that money. I'm kind of over it and now I'm in this cheap mode space and money's starting to come in. And so I just, and I know how valuable it is and how long and how hard we have to work just to get like a little chunk. So I don't, you know, I thought, forget it. I got out my buckets and my gloves and I just did the work and I still have some stuff to do. I have to relocate some spiders. They're not in here, but they're already starting in my bathroom again. Also, I had to switch out the racks. The other rack was all broken down. So we put a nice rack in here, cleaned everything. I love it. And I have the fan going to kind of freshen it up and get the cleaning smell. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't washed out the tub and I'm gonna actually have Bali do that because it's it kind of starts building a layer of soap scum and Bali takes cleaning stuff in the scouring brushes and he makes it shine because he's very strong. I am not. Also, we are being very sparing with our grocery shopping and our money. And we are finally, we have finally um, had two paydays. So I'm very excited about that. But now <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with using up all our stuff. So I found this in the cupboard. So I've been using up everything in my cupboards and pantry. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna go through everything, but I have my chest freezer is almost empty and um, I'm using up old seasonings and sauces that were just kind of shoved to the back because I kept buying, but I wasn't using. So now we're using everything up. So I found this wonderful thing. Today's meal is gonna be kind of boring. It's polenta. I'm gonna turn that off so I don't overcook it. It's just some polenta, which is delicious. And I'm gonna saute this broccoli with a little bit of this and oh it smells delicious so yeah it's really fabulous we're using it all up yeah hooey and of course i've got my afternoon coffee and we have a couple avocados we got to use i don't know why one of the kids opened them because they were making avocado toast. And so now we got to eat that up too. Because um, I could eat that with the polenta. That would be delicious. So yeah, our eating is amazing. Like now all we snack on is popcorn. Which we have like almost 50 pounds of popcorn. <laughs> so we have lots of popcorn. And then fruit, which we ate all. No, we have lots of apples now. So anyway, we've been eating tons and tons of fruit and popcorn as a snack instead of chips, packaged chips, cookies, candy from the corner market, um, you know, stuff like that. Or even, ma I'm not even making cookies. And I tell you, I'm feeling pretty healthy. I washed these cupboards and I know they don't look very clean but this is just any marks you see this is I think this is hair dye I had some hair dye that turned brown and well I made a mess so that's me but most of this is just the paint this is chalk paint I know it was really popular all the youtubers were painting everything in chalk paint I would never do it again, ever. It chips, it doesn't peel, but it chips and it doesn't age well. So I washed 
all of these, all of them, all of them. Well, actually that, that, okay, that could actually be scratched off. Okay, so I could have done better. All right, so I almost did, but most of these, wait, is that, okay. Anyway, I do declare I'm being proven wrong here by the moment. All right, anyway, I washed these and a lot of it, is obviously, oh Lord, I gotta get my rag again. Okay, I took a scrub mommy to it. But just, you know, this is how it's aged. And I find that chalk paint is really weird because I did the red and as you can see, there's like some darkness that keeps shining through. Um, so every once in a while I have to touch up the paint and then put a gloss over it and seal it but it still does this, like there's darkness that's kind of coming through. And I don't know why, because the original cupboards were just a plain wood. And that happened over here with this table. It, this table, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but yeah, see? I've painted it over and over and sealed it and it stains real easy too. That is, this is actually scrub clean, that is a stain. So it absorbs, colors and stains and then it has this weird wood gray wood thing that's showing through and I don't know why so no I would never ever do chalk paint again and that's the problem with sometimes you see these YouTube or even articles or blogs and someone gets excited about something and they're like, there you go, try it. But they haven't really had the full span to see how it worked out. Because I can't be the only one who's disappointed. My friend, who's an artist and a painter, said that chalk paint is like not, a professional would never choose that because of the way it weathers and ages. Here's the meal. So it's polenta with a little cheddar in it. And then... You know, the Korean barbecue sauce sauteed broccoli. And it's quite delicious. I also have these new pillows. So I got to fix up my couch a little bit. And my office is sort of clean now. Good morning. Ugh. Oh man, I cleaned the kitchen and the bathroom like nobody's business yesterday. Gotta turn this down. The music's good today, but I don't wanna get copyrighted. I have my um, I have my radio in the kitchen. Day six of no TV. Maybe it's day five, day six, day seven. Who knows, who cares? Nobody's cared. We have my TV and I watch movies. And the kids have their computer so they could care less what happens. But I love not having the TV. Oh my goodness. I'm starting to read more. I just feel peaceful because there's not that constant loud. I do like, especially when I'm alone, I like to turn on the TV um, and have the noise and the color and, you know, because... I, it gets lonely sometimes, like the kids are going to the library today. I'm going to be alone for four hours. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> okay, we're going to make, also, I'm making my coffee. I'm making the first coffee of the morning. I'm going to make, have a bunch of these that I got from the food bank over time that I kept. We don't eat this peanut butter because it's got a lot of oil and sugar. We eat very plain peanut butter that's just peanuts. But I love to make the cookies out of these. So all I do is I take these and eggs and sugar, that's all. And because this already has sugar and oil and everything, it makes a very rich. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to empty out. I can only have enough for two cups. Okay, we're gonna, that one's sealed up tight. So we'll leave that. 
So I think, okay, I only have two eggs and there's probably more than two cups here. Let's see how many cups are in here. This is not rocket science, but, oh, and there's my amazing coffee. Oh, there's a little bit of gross, okay. All right, now I gotta find a cup. That can sometimes be the big drama of the day. Where is a cup big enough for Mama Kate to have her big old coffee latte? Ta-da! We gotta put a little sugar in that. I don't have any honey. But what I gotta do, what I should do, is put Oh gosh. Today is very exciting. I can get in the pool. All oh, the birds have been so fun to watch this morning. I don't know why. I don't know, they're just really beautiful. Let me see if I can show you. We've got these birds that have like a little red on their head and there's one on his, there we go. Look at that. They're just, I just love it. They're just so busy in the morning, eating and hanging out, and taking their little baths and Back to peanut butter cookie making. Did I stir my coffee? Okay, I think I did. Okay, they say there's two cups in here. There's 16 ounces, two cups, but I'm just trying to get a gist of what I've got here. Okay, we're gonna need a smaller spoon. Anyway, it's been kind of cold. We weren't into getting in the pool when it was cold, but now it's the end of June and we're finally like I think it's going to be in the 90s today, so I am looking forward to getting in that pool. So what I'll do is I'm going to make peanut butter cookies, and I'm going to take the kids to the library, come home, work out, do some writing. Obviously, I'm filming now. And then later, my extra, I'm trying to just throw extra, extra, extra exercise in. And so later, I will swim laps. I gotta fill that pool up a little bit. And it is, you are able to swim laps. I mean, it's not a huge pool, but it is big enough I mean, they're very short laps, but it is big enough to do some laps. And the kids swim around and it's just fabulous. Fabulous. And Now, they want you to do two cups. They want you to do one cup peanut butter, one cup sugar, and one egg. But I tell you, there's already sugar in that peanut butter. So, I don't do it. I don't. I just can't. It's too crazy. It's too... Oh, my goodness. What happened here? My eggs, my eggs are frozen. Okay. I better turn down the fridge.
Okay, I gotta turn down my fridge because obviously. Anyway, my house was getting a little grungy. I have been, I might have to let these eggs warm up for a minute. I don't know. Anyway, my house was getting a bit grungy and I've been feeling lazy. I have just wanted to read and play with the kids and I don't know. I just needed a little bit of a break, so I do it. I give myself a in-house vacation and I just kind of do the bare minimum and play, you know? Just color, draw, read. I've been writing, but that's, you know, I really enjoy that. It's not fiction writing. And I've got some really good books. I am enjoying Bad Summer People. I'm reading that book and I tell you, I really enjoy her work. I love how she's developed these characters. Look at my eggs or not. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit. Okay, I had to let those egg yolks melt a little bit. Anyway, there's nothing like, it's just such a beautiful morning. And the windows are open and the birds are chirping. And I love my little island is right here under the window. And I love looking out this window because our neighbor's yard is lovely and our yard has become so lush and pretty. And I'm telling you, grinding those stumps down made all the difference. What a huge, huge difference getting rid of this, especially that big stump. We could have done something creative with it, but we weren't. And now it's gone and it just looks so much better. So we just need to get a little more. You know, look at out there. It's just, it's just becoming beautiful. We just need a little more, like some more wood chips to finish up the yard. But this yard is just amazing. And then, you know, we have the bird bath and all the food and the holly tree and everything. So this is a real bird hangout right out here. Anyway, I'm heating up the oven. We're going to get these in. We're going to, I haven't taken cookies to the librarians in a long time. Uh-oh, someone got stuck outside. All right, Miss Molly got herself stuck outside, huh? So my house, anyway, so we go through a phase as homemakers. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I've been a homemaker for over 12 years, a hardcore straight homemaking. Well, actually not, because I've been then, I started writing, then I started YouTubing and blogging, and so I'm not just a homemaker. I think when you focus just on one thing, like homemaking, it is a little bit easier. Like, that's your focus. That's your life. That's your day. Ugh, why is that all slimy? I gotta make, make sure everything's mixed up. But, kids, kids require a lot of focus and attention because you want them to turn out well. So they need constant guidance and correction and encouragement. And then when you have other stuff going on, like when you're an artist. What are you Really? You're leaving already? It's not even eight. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, that's all the cookies I can fit on there. All right, so I'm waiting for the oven to heat up. And then I'll stick the cookies in. So we're kind of getting on our summer routine slowly. Finally, the hot weather, we've been swimming. There were a few days it was actually cold and overcast. We did not swim. And now we're gonna go to the library today. 
we're taking cookies. So, I've had the best luck finding clothes on the street. Oh, the oven, hold on. Okay, <clears throat> and I still, listen, there's still ice in here. I made this last night, well, yeah, in the evening. I fill it up with ice and I was drinking and then I bring it to bed at night because I do wake up sometimes and need water. And there's still, I, I love this thing. It keeps, <laughs> I still have ice in there. Anyway, I've had the best luck pulling things off the street. And the other day, this guy called me over. He was cleaning out his garage and we got these lovely, I got really nice, nice black t-shirts. I got three of them. Three of them, one of them is an Herba Markets, <clears throat> Los Angeles, and we looked it up and it was t-shirts made by a smoker for a smoker, a marijuana smoker. So it's like a cannabis brand t-shirt. Oh, we feel very hip. And then there was another one called something Marketplace, something. Anyway, nice brand. So anyway, three, I don't know where they all are. But, oh, I took two of them because Bali couldn't fit into them, which sadly, he and I are kind of the same size. He looks like a big guy, so it bums me out because I fit in his t-shirts. I'm like, I always think I'm smaller than him. <laughs> anyway, so like three really nice new black t-shirts made by two different nice companies. And then... These, and these are really nice, nice button up, you know, button up shirts. One, and they fit Bali perfect. And they're like in such perfect shape. No stains, Columbia Sportswear Company. So here's another one. And this one has like netting in it, which is really weird. And then the back's open, I guess, to make it cooler so a nice another nice what is happening here okay it's made weird I don't know why they put layers so anyway the shirts like this like it opens up kind of in the back and then the things people so I guess that keeps you cooler like if you're running you'll catch the wind I don't know but it's okay it's still a nice button-up shirt I can never figure out how to. So two of those, three black shirts and a really nice pair of jeans that fit Bali perfectly and a really nice newish pair of shorts, like cargo shorts or whatever, um, that, and he needed. So now he has four pairs of shorts. So we've been doing the summer inventory. So everybody has all their summer clothes and their summer pajamas. But I think that is like the sixth time I have pulled clothes off the street. I'm just finding them like crazy. I'm not finding as nice. Um, that one day I drove through this little town and um, there were piles of things on the street because some people had moved out. They had been evicted. And the landlords were just piling things on the street. And I looked through it and grabbed a bunch of things. That was the day I scored for myself. I had, I scored, so, uh-uh. I'm just starting. Anywho, um, so that was when that pile of clothing, I just kind of, I was looking at them and then I just scooped them all up and brought them home and washed them. And sometimes I'll do that. I won't, like, if it looks like, it's a pile that works for us. I'll just bring it all home, wash it, sift through it, and then whatever doesn't work for us goes to the thrift store or I put back out on the street. But that pile, man, I scored so many nice tops and they were, the person was my size. How often does that happen? And they're long tops that fit over my stretch pants, because I love wearing stretch pants. They're so comfortable, I love them. But I like to have, you know, shirts that are long enough to cover everything, you know, to go past my bum and my hips and cover things. And 
So lots of really great tops there. And then I've just been finding all kinds of, you know, little items here and there on the street. So our wardrobes are now full and I have lots of stuff to take for the cruise, which is of course my big focus. Everything is for the cruise. Everything. Anyway, I have, so I've been in this wonderful, you know, I, you as a homemaker, you know, like I said, you don't get weekends, you don't get nights off, you don't work the day shift and then the night shift and the double shift. You work all the shifts and you don't clock out. I mean, you do get to sleep. Um, that's allowed. But no weekends, vacations, you take your work with you, that kind of thing. So there is um, a burnout that can happen, you know, even if you love what you're doing. Like I love being a homemaker. I love being a mother, but there is a burnout. And I don't think, you know, I think that that is discussed, but I think it needs to be really made clear, especially for people who are staying home. Like, yes, think about it. If you were a caregiver, hold on cookies. Okay, cookie mission complete. Cookie mission complete. And I guess only one kid's going to the library today. We're all into being home, you know? We're all, like, it's really cozy here and it's really comfy and then we have the pool and the garden and but there's no reason to leave the house but once in a while we've got to get out a little bit like go to lunch outside the house anyway so the thing with the burnout is really real i mean if you had a job if you worked a job and you were there every day from morning to the time you went to bed and every single day and then when you went on vacation and you didn't have weekends or anything, and then on vacation, you took your laptop and your work or whatever, you know, you would burn out very fast. And homemaking is different because, you know, a lot of people who, well, hopefully a lot of people have chosen to home, be homemakers and they love it. I mean, I hear a lot of people say positive things. I got to close the door. <clears throat> So, you know, homemaking is something that a lot of people that do it do love what they're doing. They enjoy it. They're grateful for it. They've, you know, many of us worked out in the workforce for years. And so homemaking is like, you know, um, retirement, but a busy, busy retirement. And then there's motherhood. And... You know, hopefully we've all chosen. I definitely could not wait to be a mother. And I had to wait till I was in my 40s. So I really embraced it. When it happened, I embraced it. And I worked until I was 41. I worked, I started working at 15. And then I was always working two jobs, going to school or three jobs. And so I was very, I was too busy and I didn't accomplish anything except for just run on this hamster wheel. So when I came home to roost and become a homemaker, it was just heaven, absolute heaven. And I was kind of bored at first, but then I started getting busy. And then I had two kids and then I got busy and then I got too busy and I had to kind of learn this balance. And I definitely have needed outside, I've needed things like my writing and the channel to be creative and give me something extra. Homemaking to me, when I just like the times I've taken big breaks and I just focused on homemaking and parenting, it was very cozy and I loved it very much. But there is a point where I get a little lonely or bored and I need creative outlets, you know, and that's the writing and filming has been perfect for me. But I also feel like, you know, homemakers need to understand, like you wouldn't work 
that job that I talked about. You wouldn't work 24-7, 365 days. Like you would need time off every week. You would need, you know, to have set hours. You would need to have vacations. And it's the same with caregivers. If someone's a caregiver, now I know it's a different, it's different if you're taking care of someone elderly or sick, a full grown adult, it's very different. Um, children are very cute and you can pick them up easily and you know, they're just delightful, but they are a lot of work. They're packaged real cute to distract you, but they are so much work. And I really hope that everybody takes time to kind of realize that as homemakers and mothers or fathers, parents, it we're, it's a lot of work and it uh, drains us emotionally and our energy and our everything because we give all of it. And so we have to find ways to take space, to get breaks. I didn't, for years I didn't. I didn't have anyone I could trust to babysit. I didn't have any family near me. I had nowhere to drop the kids off when I was just like done. So I had to learn, and I was work, I was doing all these side things, you know, I was doing like the YouTube and the writing and the this and the blogging and the, and I had to learn over and over like this is too much you're burning yourself out which makes me an unpleasant person so i had to learn how to pace myself with everything even though i'm like but i'm having fun i'm enjoying it and then suddenly i hit the wall oh now i'm super burnt out and angry with everything so you know to unfortunately it took me a long time to figure it out but i did and some one of the books that helped me was Essentialism by Greg McKeown. I always mention that book, but that really, that book does not work for everyone. And it feels, it when you read it, you're like, well, this is for like corporate people and corporate COOs or CEOs or, you know, <clears throat> presidents of, you know, managers of big tech companies. Because he does actually co talk to and coach a lot of big companies and big managers with big tech companies. And so it seems kind of like a weird book that a housewife would totally relate to. Um, but I did. I completely related to that book. I loved the stories in it. I applied them to my life. But I'm also kind of a manager, you know, it's like I'm managing the home, I'm managing the kids, plus I'm managing a channel, plus I'm managing my writing career. So I do feel like my own, um, you know, big manager, top manager of my own company, Mrs. Singh's company. So I'm still learning. So I got rid of a lot of stuff, you know. A long time ago, I got rid of social media. I tried Facebook one more time and then got rid of it immediately. I, it's a real hard, clear no with social media. Like I have none of it. I got rid of everything. And as you know, I've got rid of my channel a couple times. But I got rid of everything, kept my writing. My writing is without question. Like I never question my writing. The channel, I've gone back and forth. But there are many reasons and I think I'm at peace with that today. Okay, today. I feel like I'm at peace. I'm really enjoying it and um, pacing myself. But I have had to learn how to create pockets of time and to enjoy my work, pace my work, create a lot of breaks, pockets of time. And I did finally figure out how to have an amazing vacation where I joyfully bring my family with me because I'm crazy about my family. I don't want to have a vacation without them, but I found out how to do a vacation where I'm not cooking and cleaning. So we're doing this cruise here pretty soon. And the cruise for me is like, 
I don't have to clean. I don't have to make my bed and their beds. I don't have to cook. I don't have to clean up after. I mean, I'm pretty tidy anyway. But there are many vacations we've gone on that I am doing all the cooking and cleaning and prepping. And even when we would go to the coast and stay at the lodge, <clears throat> I would have to, you know, get foods and prepare it in the room or, you know, figure out how to... <clears throat> We went, we, we went to a lodge and we stayed with some friends, but I bought food and we cooked it at the friends. And then after that, the place was so packed because it was tourist time. We couldn't get into a nice, there was one restaurant, I, one I couldn't find, one I couldn't get into. <clears throat> and so I had to get food and prepare it in our lodge. So it's like there's there was always kind of like me trying to figure out where to go, where to drive, where to get groceries, preparing meals, cleaning up, no matter where we go. Whoops. But now I've masked. I've figured it out. Now I'm going to have a royal vacation on the royal icon. And this summer, I've been extremely low-key. I'm not going to say lazy. I'm, I don't have a lazy bone in my body, but low key, just resting, reading. I seriously, my house is in great shape, which is surprising because I literally do one project a day. Like I tackle my laundry, which I have more, which I did. I actually folded it. I, I just have to put it away. It's a miracle. <clears throat> but I tackle like one thing a day. And then the regular tidying, you know, making beds, having a semi-clean kitchen and cooking. I've been cooking from scratch. Everything, everything from scratch. But my meals have become so simple. Like yesterday, polenta and vegetables. And we ate all of it. And then I made another batch of polenta and another huge pan of vegetables for that night. And that's, we actually have leftovers and we will eat that. But my cooking, everything has been streamlined. And I've been purging. I have purged six boxes, one piece of furniture, two wall hangings. And I think I'm pretty much done. I mean, every time I bring a box in, I try to fill it up. Because I still have too much. But I don't know. A lot of it's kind of needed. I am actually down to everything we need. Love, use. Glory be. Anyway, but um, yeah, like one day I swept and mopped and vacuumed the house. Yesterday I cleaned the kitchen, the bathroom thoroughly. Like I really, it took me hours because I scrubbed the cabinets. I scrubbed the island top to bottom. It was coated in flour because I cook so much. Like everything in the kitchen is like the fronts of the stove and the fronts of the island, everything is like got stuff stuck to it, like sauces and flour and bread and, oh, it was gross. So I really got out my little scrub daddies and my little wire scrubber and a big bucket of hot soapy water and I scrubbed everything. And I get kind of funky, like when my house gets grungy and my kitchen's like really gross like that, um, I get really like it makes me tired and a little bit funky. Like I just, and then I can't, so I have to just focus. I have to be like, get out the cleaning buckets, put on the apron, tackle the worst job first, which is the toilet, worst job, and then move out from there. And then, and what I do is I put on my, you know, I have my little earphones, I plug them in the phone, I find something I wanna hear you know, so lecture, or some kind of spiritual talk, or Timothy Ward sometimes, although the live ones are kind of annoying. He's so good at doing live, Timothy Ward, but they are kind of like, it's a lot of, hey, 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 what's up, what's up, oh, they, thank you, thank you, oh, nice to see you, you know, and it's a lot of that through the whole thing. It's like, let's get back to the topic. So yeah, I'm not as crazy about the lives and I'm not gonna do the lives. I thought about it. People wanted me to do it, but there's no way. They're not interesting. 
It's like, I just want to sit and talk and have my stream of consciousness and you get that. And so that's why I, I like Timothy Ward's where he just talks for 15 minutes. Anyway, I listen to something and I focus on that while I'm doing my work because with, with this house, I feel like when you get into it, you got to get into it and it takes a few hours. So anyway, but, um, and my house, you know, it got grungy cause I just was like, I did the basics to keep it tidy, but then I was just, I don't know. I was just kind of, I was like reading in bed. I've been waking up reading in bed and then I go out and water and then, you know, make a meal. And then later on I swim and I read. Okay. So lots of, let me get to this, <clears throat> Bad Summer People. I'm going to give this book a five star. Now, nothing, <laughs> nothing really has happened. Like it started out with a body. A boy finds a body on the pier or the boardwalk or somewhere. I've forgotten already. And then we go into these people. And we just go and we get to know all these people that hang out at this island it's kind of like the Hamptons, but it's a little side island for rich people in the summer. And we get into all, you know, each chapter is devoted to a person. So we get into it and we get to know them. And then it's kind of like this little soap opera. We just kind of follow along with these people and this soap opera. And I don't really, there isn't much of a mystery and I don't know where the dead, what happened to the dead body. That hasn't happened. The person hasn't been killed yet because we had to flash forward, back, whatever. But I have to tell you, I really like this Emma, Emma Rosenblum. I dig her. I really do. I mean, I've been reading these good reads like Mysteries with these young authors who are popular and the writing is hideous and annoying and they use all these little metaphors and similes that are outrageous and the characters are like ugh, they have like no personality and you feel like I really don't care like I just want someone to die and the book to end but not with this not with this one I can't say there's really anything exciting going on. I don't know what the mystery is. I don't know who's going to die. If someone's going to die, I think someone's going to die. I think I know who already. But these, even though these are rich people with a lot of like inner problems that, you know, they've got their little dramas, I actually like them. I have grown to like some of them despite themselves. And I like how she writes. She writes intelligently and she writes in a way where you get to know the characters without it being forced. You just kind of get to know them as if you're there on the island and you've spent a few days. So you're like, yeah, I kind of get how Rachel is and Jason and Sam and Ju Lauren and Jay. You know, I'm getting them. I'm getting who they are, what they're about. I kind of like them despite their stuff. And... And there's humor. She's got very subtle humor, but she's clever. She's a good writer. So even if there isn't much of a, well, we're getting towards the end. I'm like, yeah, I'm almost done here. I think I have, okay, I have less than 100 pages. Okay, so yes, I would suggest this. This is an enjoyable read. It's just well written. And then... And then I've got a whole pile right here to get into. And I'm not quite sure what to do if I should start on the Stephen King book because it's so big. I mean, that's like, oh, I don't know. But that's what I'm trying to do this summer. It's like I'm really trying to move away from the TV and the Internet and move into reading where I'm just reading and being present and cooking and gardening I'm doing a whole Zen thing this summer. Anyway, I better get dressed and take the kitties to the library.
Hi, kitty pie. She's come to work out with me. Have you come to work out with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got, I'm closing up the curtains. I've been closing up the curtains in all the rooms. I'm looking a little crazy, except for that curtain. I'm gonna have to, right now it's cool. I waited too long. You gotta have everything open at night and you have the fans running in the windows cause I have like this fan running in a window. This is an example and it keeps this room really cool at night. And then, you know, I'm, I'm telling you guys everything you already know, but <clears throat> then you gotta close it up real quick. And I waited and the heat was already coming through, but I try to reduce my air conditioning usage. Look at that little slinky. Look at that little slinky. Anyway, these are all the, my larva, see, I just have tons of them, tons. So I have a big bag of beans and rice we will keep, but I already have tons of oats, tons of flour, tons of rice, tons of beans. And I'm a little concerned. I cooked up some beans the other day and it really took me two days. So I'm going to take some of his beans and soak them, boil them and then soak them overnight and see if that's the problem. And if so, I could always save them for seeds. You can seed them. I remember one person sent me. Oh, this is brown rice. Oh, so many beans. It's crazy. And I don't even, they're all pinto. And what date is this? See, 2019. So that's five years. Beans will last a long time, especially if they're in mylar bags. But that is five years. I'm shocked he didn't use his stuff. This is a crazy thing. Oh, black beans. I'm going to keep those. 20. It's 20. 20, 20. Um, Pinto. I'm kind of shocked. Like, why do these people store up all this stuff? And then he didn't. Instead, he, like. I don't want to give those bags away. Anyway, so there's all this. And then there's all this. And we can't go through all of this in a proper time. And it's already four or five years. So these things need to be eaten up. And I don't understand. I'm going to save some oats. I'm saving a couple things. And like I said, we have a huge bag of pinto beans from this guy. And a huge bag of rice. And we still have buckets full of beans and rice. So we're good. Um... But here it is, the, the, the wonderful person who gave this. I was really, you have to give it to him. He knew he had an issue, and so he decided to get rid of all of it. But the problem is, I now have pintos all over my floor. The thing is, why at one point didn't he just say, okay, I, I stocked all this, it's an issue, then start eating it. You were going to stockpile it if something happened, right? So why not just be like, okay, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to start eating it and eat it up and save yourself a ton of money for that year. You already spent all that money. Eat it up. Use it. Take a, you know, six months to a year a break this, this from buying one. groceries. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because that's not non gmo Is it non-GMO oats? Is it non-GMO oats? No, it's really. It doesn't say non-GMO? No, they say old-fashioned oats. But how about that little mark right here? Look, what's this? What's that? Oh, whole grains? Okay. So you want you put one bag over there. What one There's bag? Some bag. Is this beans? I don't know about small paper. You want to bring those out too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saving... Okay. Okay, I'm saving a few brown, and this is black beans, and I am saving some oats, but see, I don't know if these are non-GMO oats, too. And you need to be like that. Oats are the heaviest sprayed. Oats and wheat, so that's why people have problems bag, right? with their stomachs. Okay. Let me see. Yes. That, red, yes. Red beans? Yeah. Oh, red beet. You want to save the red beans? Let's save the red beans. This is rice, 21. Oh, we don't need any rice. This is a pinto. No, God, no. 
We've got Pinto. I mean, you know, it's like during the quarantine, it's you couldn't find a Pinto. Or no, just put it in there. Yeah, I don't. His stuff's all like, you know, we couldn't find a Pinto to save our life. Now we've got Pintos coming out our ear. But we're going to have Pintos coming out everyone's ear. See? These cannot. So I'm just going to set aside these. And then, like I said, I have the other. And you've seen the buckets in my kitchen. So we're more than taken care of. Okay, this is about it, Bali. Oh, gosh, no. Hold on. This is crazy. I'm going to save this up. Maybe we should get rid of some of this up. I have lots of canned vegetables, herbs. I saved the teas. I saved some of his stuff. I actually did not save much of... We had a full, full pile truckload of stuff. And we've taken pretty much all of it at this point has gone to the food bank. So, but we did get some things. I saved some up here. Do you want to save more? No. Okay. I saved some oats and I saved some brown rice and some, did you save some kidney beans? I have no beans or nothing. Well, because, oh, here's macaroni noodles. I'll save those. Well, I think we should save some kidney beans. Spiral pasta. How come this fell down? Why is this falling down? What's happening? What is this? Oops. Okay, so I'll save a few things. That's more than enough. That really is more than enough. Okay, that's enough, honey. Well, wait, I have all these. God damn it, the next time we know going to read or somebody <laughs> else. <sighs> oh, I know. I knew it would come back and bite me in the butt. I knew it. I knew it. Because we did. We went and went to that guy's house and... And then we wound up saving all the Save vegetarian the and then... And then I was like, I don't want to do the, the for, I don't want to do the processed, there was just crazy stuff. A lot of canned meat, which really grosses me out. Oh, here's some red beans. Don't worry, we got some red beans. Bento beans again. And then, you know, it's just, it's just kind of like we took truckloads and then we got rid of the soups because no one was really into the soups. And then I was like, well, we got to get rid of this stuff because do we have lots of lentils, Bali? Okay. Here's orange lentils. I'll save those. And then there's a whole bag of popcorn. We're not going to get rid of that. So from what we saved of his was the popcorn and a ton of rice, a ton of salt. Look at this little girl. She's like, I'm not getting the attention that I want. Oh, this is absurd. I don't blame Bali for being pissed. Because we go on these crazy runs and we get this stuff and then if we had used it all. But like I said, it was gross. There's a lot of weird canned meats that really freaked me out. And then we had a lot of soups and the kids ate them for a while and then they didn't really enjoy them because we're used to homemade soup. And I don't know what else. And then I gave friends a bunch of stuff. Okay, the car is running out.